Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chapter 2. Let's go ahead and get that on the screen there. Okay, so Chapter 2. So just reminding you, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. So let's keep progressing that struggle together through the content. And let me help you understand it as we try to understand our way through this material. Uh, so we're looking at some chemistry, uh, the chem uh, chemical level of organization, um, uh, chemical organization of life. Uh, as we look at the chemistry, as we look at what's going on, very important because this is going to set the stage for a lot of uh, for a lot of physiology. So we're going to spend two weeks on this chapter uh, together. It's one of the chapters I will spend two weeks on because if I'm going to pick one of the of the two, I uh, I would love to do two different chapters in two weeks, uh, chapter two and three, but I can't. It's just so we don't have that kind of time uh, in an online course because we do things by weeks. Instead of by days, um, then I can, uh, you know, I have a little bit le a little bit more time sometimes. But we're going to start with chapter two, and uh, we're going to go uh, a little bit into this. We'll, we'll, we'll get to where we do what uh, difference between a molecule and a compound, and that's where we're going to stop in our first lecture. So this is part one. So a uh, reminder uh, is every time I do a chapter that I'm going to ask these things, something from every one of these things will be on the test. Uh, kind of think of this as your test, your exam check uh, list of things absolutely will be on there. Uh, so these are guaranteed questions, uh, will be stuff that comes from these. So uh, the uh, uh, now this can be quite broad. So you want to make sure that you can actually do some of this stuff and um, 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 things like that, okay? So, okay, let's get started. So really, why do we do chemistry? Why do we have a section on chemistry in an anatomy and physiology class? Well, remember back in chapter one where I said, hey, most of your diseases, they're really going to be a result to the chemistry. A problem with the chemical level is going to be where some of your diseases. So it's very important, number one, that problems with your patient, but also to understand physiology. What I like to say, uh, a lot of the physiology that we'll do, the really complex physiology that we learn, like how neurons work and how muscles cells, how excitable cells work. Well, that's going to be really wrangling chemistry. We're going to be taking chemicals like ions and just wrangle them. We're just going to basically crowd and wrangle ions to some degree here. So uh, that's going to help you guys to really understand that chemistry. Okay, so as we go through this, to help you understand that. Now, remember, the smallest unit of matter, that's going to be your atom, and matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Now, uh, we might say, you know, things like solid, liquids, and gases, and things like that, supercritical fluids, and all these kinds of particular states of matter, plasma, you things, things like that you've heard of. Uh, so as we talk about that, solid, liquid, gas, you know, those states, three major states of matter. Now, uh, there are, uh, they're made up of three subatomic particles, the protons, the neutrons, and electrons. Now, let's take a look at these protons, neutrons, and electrons and get some of their properties. Now, one of the things about the properties of the subatomic particles, we have protons, we have neutrons, we have electrons. Now, protons, I've got P positive for kind of a symbol, so to speak, to stand in P positive. They are positively charged. Protons begin, the word proton begins with a P, and protons have a positive charge. Now, protons are very large. They have an atomic mass. Uh, they have a mass, what we, uh, they have a mass, not an atomic mass, but they have a mass of one atomic mass unit. There we go. Let's say that kind of more properly. One atomic mass unit, and they're located in the nucleus. Now, neutrons, these guys, we, we can say N or N0. These guys are neutral. They have no charge. Uh, kind of a joke you guys may have heard is a neutron walks into a bar, and the bartender says, well, can I get you neutrons? neutron? says, I'll have a beer. And the bartender says, sure thing, but for you, no charge. Uh, so these guys have no charge. They're large and have no charge. Protons, large and have a positive charge. Neutrons, large and have no charge. They do have also a mass of 1 AMU, and they're also located in the nucleus. Now, electrons, they are negative, E negative. So electrons are negative. Think if you got electrocuted, that would be a very negative thing to happen to somebody, to be electrocuted. Somebody get an electric shock, would be a very negative experience. Ele electron is negative. They're very small, and they have very low mass. They're actually about one... Uh, one in 1,836 of the mass. They are uh, 1,836 of the mass. So we're going to say 
no mass, basically. They're, they're, they're very low. They have very low mass. They're located in the electron cloud, the orbits or shells, sometimes we call these guys, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to say they have very, very low mass and they're very small. Now, sorry if you hear any background noise. I am recording at home, so if you hear any background noises, my dog sometimes they they'll likely will bark a little bit. I apologize. It's just I have to record at home. I can't record at the office right now. We've been out for snow, and i got to catch up with these recordings, so I'm going to do it at home right now. My dogs bark, so that's okay. They just join in on the fun. Now, this is one way that we can look at a atom. We can look at an atom. Uh, this is what's called the electron cloud model of an atom. Uh, we know that protons and neutrons, they're in the nucleus of an atom, and the electrons are around the nucleus in what we call the electron cloud. So we can look at this image and show the electron cloud contains other electrons plus the nucleus. So the electron clouds, cloud surrounds everything. Okay. Now, uh, here's kind of what I've done is I've taken uh, taken uh, the electron cloud. They're in the, has the electrons are in the electron cloud. The orbits there's approximately zero, and they have a negative one charge. Protons in the nucleus they have one amu mass, and they are plus one charge. And neutrons in the nucleus with one amu mass, and they have a zero charge. So uh, they're going their charge is going to be a negative charge, a positive charge, or a zero charge. Uh, negative one, positive one, or zero. Okay, electron, proton, neutron. Okay. Now, uh, let's look at some numbers that we might see. Now, one of the numbers we're going to talk about is atomic number, mass number, and atomic weight. Now, uh, what I'm going to kind of do is talk about these numbers, and I know, okay, there we go. I was going to say I thought I had this pulled up before, and I just forgot what the thing looked like. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to use this fine tip pen. So I'm wearing a kind of a pullover sweater warm. It's cold today. So let's say I have an atomic... Uh, a periodic table tile right here okay and we had carbon who was number six and it's about 12.011 something like that okay very close to that uh let's, let's assume this is uh i actually have the real t a periodic table but let's say we have these things okay just a few things that i want to show you about this number one the the c that's the atom symbol The six, that's atomic number. And this number right here is atomic weight. Now, what these numbers tell us is a variety of things. The atomic number tells us how many protons there are. So it tells us the number of protons. So this thing right here tells us how many protons an atom has. But it also tells me the number of electrons. The atomic weight is the average mass of the atoms. So let's kind of imagine, if you will, let's say we got an exam average. Let's say an exam average was 75%. Okay, for a class exam average. Okay, now we might have a student who made a 50 on that exam. We might have a student who made a 100 on that exam. We may have had a 70. We may have had some 75. We might have had an 80. Okay, let's just say, okay, we had some numbers. Da, 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 da. And these are the student grades. Okay. The average was 75, yet somebody failed it. Somebody made a perfect score. Somebody else made an A. So there was A's, there was B's, there was C's, and there was an F. Okay? Perfect score, low scores, things like that. Okay? Let's just say there was a series of numbers and we found the average. What the average tells us is that we have some high, some low. Now, in atoms, we're going to talk about that there are atoms that weigh more than some atoms. So they're going to have, so this atomic weight is the average mass of all the atoms, even, and that includes their isotopes, okay? Now, that's a word you may know from your chemistry classes in public school, uh, high school, your education before, okay? So let's think about that, okay? Now, atomic number, that is the number of protons, okay? That's the definition. 
and also electrons. Now, protons are positive, electrons are negative. Now, if I were to take positive 1 and add it to negative 1, that would be 0. And if I took positive 10 and added it to negative 10, I would get 0. And if I took positive 100 and added it to negative 100, I would get 0. If the number of positives equals the number of negatives, then 0 would be what it would come out to be. Okay, so that's going to be a kind of an important thing in a minute. Now, one thing if you look at a periodic table, the tile on the periodic table will always have the smallest number. That will be the atomic number. Uh, it defines the element is the number of protons, okay? But it also is the number of electrons. When protons and electrons equal, the positives and the negatives equal. And when the positives and negatives equal, this means that the charge is zero. The atom has a charge of zero because the positives and negatives cancel out. They are all said to be neutral. All atoms on the periodic table are actually neutral, okay? They all have the same charge of zero. <laughs> now, your mass number, the mass number, that is the sum of the protons and neutrons. This is a whole number. It's the sum of protons and neutrons in one atom. The atomic mass, or the atomic weight, which we sometimes use as equivalent terms, is the average mass of all atoms and their isotopes. I prefer to use atomic weight as the term that I use. It's always the largest number. It's always a decimal. It's the number at the, at the bottom, okay? It's not a mass. It's not a mass number, okay? It is a weight, okay? Now, it's a decimal. It's always going to be some kind of a, a, a non-whole number, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this. Now, if the number of protons and neutrons, if they equal each other of an atom, those protons and neutrons equal the atoms result in no charge. All atoms have that same charge, zero. If an what an element is is if I take an atom and I try to if I try to break a substance down, every atom will be the same atom. Okay, you can't break it down smaller than the atom. Okay, protons and neutrons they have mass of one amu. We add them together, we create atomic mass. If we take the sum of protons, sum of neutrons, we add it together. That's atomic mass. And atomic mass. Now, if we look at that. Uh, we have something kind of interesting, okay? Now, uh, let's go to this. So let's say that we have this element right here, okay? I like to use it as an example because it's very important in all biology is carbon. And we could say that protons equal 6, Electrons equal six. Now, okay, mass. Now, we're talking about the mass number here. Let's say mass is six at this thing, or 12, sorry, let's say 12. Let's say we have a mass of 12. Then how many neutrons do we have? How do we know? Well, here's how we can figure this out. If I have the number of neutrons, this is going to equal the number of protons minus the number of minus the mass. Sorry, I meant to do that. Minus the mass. Okay. So if I take the mass, which is 12, okay, which what we should do if you really want to do this right. Let's do this really right and so we don't get negative numbers. Let's do mass minus the uh, minus the uh, uh, basically you can say mass minus the atomic number net mass minus minus the number of protons okay so if we take that and we have the neutrons that equals 12 minus 6 so neutrons equals 6 the number of neutrons will be 6 okay so if we had something that had the mass, let's say we had uh, something else that had a mass of, of, of 14, okay? If we had a substance that had an atom that had a mass of 14, let's say we had a mass of 14 and an atomic number of 7, then the number of neutrons would equal 7, okay? All right, hope that makes sense. Okay. So... I will have you, uh, and I very well may have you calculate that, okay? So just to let you know. 
Okay. Now, what I want to do next is to discuss this idea here. We got that. So we know how to calculate the number of neutrons now. Okay. So let's talk about some essential elements. Now, if we really look at a body, if we were to take a body, 96.3% of a human body is made up of just four atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Okay. Now, there are some that we need in fewer amounts. Okay, that's that's some of the really, and then there's what we call trace elements. Trace elements can uh, imbalance in trace elements, uh, especially uh, can cause diseases like goiters, uh, iodine. Uh, if we look at this, for example, iodine is not a trace element, but it's a very small number element. It's almost a trace element. It's just barely almost a trace element. Iron is very low. You look at iron, it's only about 0.007%. Though it makes the hemoglobin, and you think you have about 25 trillion red blood cells that have 25 million hemoglobins in each uh, red blood cell. Each hemoglobin has four irons in it. That's a lot of iron, and still it's only 0.007%. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things I kind of like to make a point is these four, C-H-O-N, uh, oxygen is the most abundant, next is carbon, then hydrogen, then nitrogen. These four combine to make, uh, like I said, just about 96.3% of your body, roughly. Okay. Now, if we take, uh, and that's you know not, not that's a general percentage. This is uh, uh, that percentage is based on what I say in another class of mine. Um, so uh, be consistent with some of my courses too. I try to use that same percentage, but that's roughly okay. Uh, that may not be perfectly combining what you see right here. I, I didn't add up these these four right here. See if that was the same. Now. Uh, but I just want to give a rough, like I said, about, you know, it's about, roughly about that, okay? Now, we have some that we don't need in as much, and then we have a bunch of trace elements. Now, like, for example, um, uh, some of these we need in a very small amount. Uh, we need them in very small numbers. Now, iodine, for example, if you get your iodine off, you can get goiters if you don't have the right amount of, of iodine. You need to make thyroid hormones, uh, things like that. So you can get goiters or something like that if you have an iodine uh, deficiency. So what we're going to do now, isotopes. Now, we talk about this. Now, this idea that, let's say, isotopes... Um, we have atomic weight that is the average mass of all the atoms. Now, isotopes, they play into this, okay? Isotopes, they are going to be the same number of protons but alternate numbers of neutrons, extra neutrons. For example, let's say here's normal hydrogen. Normal hydrogen has one proton, one electron only, okay? It doesn't have neutrons, its electron shell has one and only one electron and one and only one proton. So negatives equal positives, and this has a zero charge. But look, there's no neutron. We have an isotope of hydrogen called deuterium. Deuterium contains a neutron. So now this thing still has a zero charge because neutron is neutral. P plus, that is... Uh, that is a positive, and E negative, that is negative. So this still has a neutral charge to it. But now this isotope weighs one AMU more. This one here, tritium, uh, hydrogen 3, it has one, two, three AMU mass in the nucleus, okay? plus its little electron. So it still has no charge, but it now has a mass of three. So a mass of one, a mass of two, and a mass of three. Hydrogen one, hydrogen two, hydrogen three. Hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. These are isotopes. Now, isotopes, some isotopes, what they do because they have alternate numbers of neutrons, they are heavier. And because they are heavier, they are uh, they sometimes are unstable and they give off radiation called radioisotopes. And if they're radioisotopes, they have a half-life, how long it takes for half of it to decay. Okay, some half-lives are very, very short. Some half-lives are quite long. Some things have half-lives that are measured to be quite high uh, and uh, will be around for a very long time. 
Now, atomic weight. Atomic weight is the average mass of all the isotopes, basically, and, and normal atoms. So basically, kind of think of it this way. Let's say you have an exam average. This tells you average. It doesn't tell you what is the highest exam grade and what is the lowest exam grade. It doesn't tell you the heavy isotopes. It doesn't tell you the normal atoms. It, so now... For example, 12.011 roughly is, uh, I do believe, uh, the atomic weight of, of carbon. Let's, let's Right here, I can show you. 12.011. Uh, 12.011 is the atomic weight of carbon. Okay. Now, carbon's atomic weight, 12.011, that is uh, its atomic weight. Now, it's because there are some isotopes. There's regular carbon-12, there's carbon-13, and carbon-14. Okay, now let's kind of explain this isotope thing just a little bit more. Okay, let's help you kind of understand isotopes. Okay, carbon 12. My dogs keep coming to me. I'm home and they're like, You need to pet me. Um, so. Okay, so let's say we have these, okay? We have the number of protons, we have the number of electrons, and we have the number of neutrons. Then we also, let's, let's do this. Let's do number of protons, number of electrons, number of neutrons, and mass. Okay. Let's do this to really kind of help make the point. Okay. So they're all going to have six protons. They're going to have the same atomic number. Okay. They're all going to have the same number of this. Okay. So they all have the same charge, zero. Carbon 12, it's going to have six, so the mass is 12. This is going to have uh, 7, so the mass is 13. This is going to have 8, so the mass is 14. So it is the number of neutrons in which they are different. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope that does. I hope that made that make sense to you guys. Okay? Okay. Now, the reason I'm – what I'm trying to do is kind of keep some of these lectures down to smaller – Section so you guys can easily kind of figure out what you're doing and, and, and kind of make it manageable. Um, but also they're online lectures. So I'm also trying – I urge you to kind of draw one right with me, especially when we get ready to do the atoms. Now, a mole, that's how much of an element is equal to its atomic weight. Okay, We express it in grams. I don't have you calculate those. So this is a periodic table. Uh, I chose this one. Uh, this one is an updated uh, – this one's kept up with really well. It's an up, pretty up-to-date. Uh, it's even got our state element here, Tennessean, uh, number 117, the element of the state of Tennessee that was made in Oak Ridge National Laboratory. I do believe that's where it was made is Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which is in Tennessee, are where I am now recording. So uh, that's where our college is. So for those who are actually listening to this who's not from Tennessee, so majority, all my students are here in Tennessee, but uh, people do watch this on YouTube as well, so – all right, so uh, let's talk about atoms. Now, atoms, uh, we're going to look at atoms in the electron cloud, and they're going to be really important for the reactivity of an element, okay? They're going to determine how reactive it is, is the electron. Now, we have many shells, so kind of do this. What I like to do here is say, let's say I have an atom, okay? And let's say right here we have the nucleus, okay? So we have the nucleus. Now, Let's say I have a shell right here. Let's say there was just one shell in this atom. This shell right here is on the outside. So it would be the one shell, but it would be the outermost. Okay? So let's say we had one of them. Well, what if there was more than one? What if there was a second one? Then this second one would be the outermost shell. What if there was a third one? This third one would be the outermost shell. But there always will be some shell that is on the 
outside. And it is the electrons in this outer shell that is going to define the reactivity of these atoms and what they can do. Okay, So that is going to be very big for the chemistry, is the outer shell uh, is going to be determining the chemistry. Okay, The name we give to the outer shell is called the valence shell. Now the valence shell electrons are the outer shell electrons. They're the ones that can participate in the chemistry because they're on the outside. Now, they determine bonding. The electrons of the valence shell are called the valence electrons, so they're electrons. Now, kind of think of it this way. Let's say that we were to go to uh, so a nearby campus. There is a pizza buffet. And let's say we went to the pizza buffet, and we went to eat pizza. And we go in there, and one of you guys goes in, and you eat pizza. And you eat so much pizza, you clear out the pizza buffet. So there's no pizza left, and everybody else goes hungry. You ate all the pizza, and no one else got any. And because of that, because you ate so much pizza, the owner of the pizza buffet, they come out and they say, well, we've never seen anyone eat so much pizza. Here's a free pizza. And they try to give you a free pizza, and you're like, oh, no, I can't possibly eat any more pizza. One of the students in your class who didn't get pizza – they grab it and they start eating it because they were not full. They didn't get any pizza because you ate it all. Well, when you have an atom whose valence shell is full, it can't take any more electrons. So it's filled. That means it's not reactive. We call it inert. If it's unfulfilled and it's not full, it's going to be reactive. It's going to want to take electrons. Okay. Now, the electron shell, how do we know if it's full or not? Well, it has to do with how many electrons each shell can hold. Each shell or orbit or energy level, whatever you want to call it, has a maximum number of electrons they can hold. Now, how we fill them is a lot like trying to find parking at school. You want to park your car as close to the school as you can. Now, let's say you guys get there in the morning and you're ready to park to come to class. And you're hoping to park really close to the building. You pull in, and there's only so many spots in parking lot number one. But parking lot number one is full. So you have to drive to parking lot number two, which is a little further away from the building, to see if it's full. If it's full, you got to go off to parking lot number three or four or five. You have to go as far, uh, so you fill the first shell first, then the second, then the third, and higher shells till you get to the seventh. Okay? We fill them inside out, like we park, like when you go to the mall and you want to park as close as you can to the mall, you want to get the closest. Okay? So that's kind of get, we got to get a number here. Now, I'm going to draw it instead of reading it out to you, but let's kind of think about that like this. Okay? The nucleus is going to be like a building, like the mall or something that you want to park near, okay? And you want to park near the nucleus. Now, we, we are only going to learn three shells. The first shell, shell number one, it can only hold two electrons, okay? One. One. Two and it's full. Okay? So shell one can hold up to two electrons. Now let's take shell number two. Shell number two. We can hold as many as eight. Two, four, six, eight. Now the third shell. Third shell is weird. Depending on the element. Its maximum the third shell ever can hold is 18. But you are never responsible for any atom that holds more than 8. So what we're going to say is the three 
holds eight. Two, eight, eight. Because we're never going to go past argon in this class. This is not general chemistry. I won't go further. So we're going to stop. We're going to go 288. So this one can hold up to 8. 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay? All right. So, 288. Now, that's the max. Now, this is like parking cars in a parking lot. Lot number, uh, shell number one, once it's full, you have to go to shell two. So let's practice this a little bit. And so as I, I can show you right here, okay, uh, these, um, we're never going to go past argon uh, for us. Uh, we'll never go past argon in this class. Uh, this gets most of the big, it gets, uh, it gets chone, C-H-O-N. This gets a C-H-O-N-N. -N. It gets those, and that's, that gets 96, uh, you know, about 96% of, of, of the atoms in your body. So that's good. It gets 96% of your elements. Hey, we're doing pretty good. Okay. So let's take a look at this, okay? So let's go back right here, use this. So let's start with our favorite carbon, carbon number six, okay? So let's say I've got a carbon atom right here, okay? That's one of our favorite elements is carbon because we always call ourselves carbon-based life forms. Okay, so let's say we got carbon right here, okay? Now we've got a carbon nucleus. So right here, let's say we have a nucleus. And we have the nucleus of carbon right here. And we have shell number one. Okay, shell number one right here that we have. Now, what we're going to do is we know that for this, we have six protons and six electrons. Okay. So we have six electrons that we need to park, okay? Now, what we're going to do, we can get two here. Okay, six minus two electrons. Six, seven, okay. We have six. And what do we have left? Okay, so that we have now four electrons left, okay? So four, five, six. Okay, now we have six electrons left. That uh, We have four electrons left to play with. So how are we going to get those? What we're going to do is we're going to take them and we have to take these guys to the next shell. Go to the second shell. Now the second shell, what we're going to do, I'm going to do them like this. You can yell at me in the comments section of the video if you want to. I'm going to draw them like that, okay? Uh, if you don't think I did it right. Uh, I know some people like to put them in pairs, but I'm going to put them like that, okay? So, notice this. Can hold eight. But it's only got four. It needs four more. So four more bonds will get this fulfilled. So it is reactive, okay? So we could tell a lot from this periodic table based on that, okay? Good, good, good. All right. Let's practice another one. 14.007. So give me a second to erase my board here, and okay. So 14.007, because I have a hard time with, um, there we go. Okay. Sorry, my uh, my dogs are also trying to come to me. They are just like, hey, you need to give me attention. I'm You're here. Why aren't you petting me? Okay. <laughs> They're going to interrupt me every time. Okay. So we have seven protons. We have seven electrons, okay? Okay, so let's say we have a nucleus right here, and this is a nitrogen nucleus, so we have nitrogen. Okay, 
Now, let's say we have the first shell. Okay, this first shell right here, okay. We park two electrons in it, okay. And it's full. Okay, now, what we got to do is get our last ones in here. Now, we have seven. We take away two. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to have to be able to do our quick little math, okay? And that means we have to take away our two electrons, and we have five electrons left, okay? So we have five electrons that we have left to park. Now, what we're going to do is we can't fit them in the first shell. We have to take them to the second shell. Okay, and we have five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do it like that. That's how probably I should have done the other one, but it's okay. I'm doing it here. I When I draw carbon and I want to make the valence electrons and I want to make bonds for carbon, I draw it like that. So that's why I did it that way because that's how I draw it when I bond it. Okay, now this outer shell is not full, so this is a reactive element, okay? So its valence shell is not full because it can hold eight. It needs eight. It's got five, five, six, seven, eight. It needs three more. Okay. Now let's do a, an element here that we haven't done yet, and we're going to do one from this row right here. So let's do neon number 10. Okay, let's do neon number 10. And I always have to look up because 20 point, uh, 20 point one, oh, uh, okay, and number 10. I have to kind of look up the – I do not remember the mass, the atomic weights. I just don't bother with that. I, I learn their symbols, but I don't bother with learning all the memorizing things that I can easily look up. Okay, so we have not, uh, we have neon. So neon. Okay, so um, let's say we have a nucleus for neon. Uh, I was going to draw it like that now. Uh, I don't want, I can write neon. It's okay. Okay. So we have 10 protons, 10 electrons. So we have 10 electrons. First shell. We fill that shell. Second shell. We take this guy and we have, uh, so we've gotten uh, here, we have eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now when you look at this guy, it's not full. Now I'm going to do one more example because I want to do one with three shells. But this is the first one where we see it's not reactive. Why? It's outer shell, the second shell has eight electrons. It can hold eight, it's got eight, it's full, you can't put any more in it, and there's no more electrons, okay? Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to do one more. I like to do at least four examples, but I want to do one with a third shell. So I'm going to do sodium. We'll do number 11. So sodium is just is number 11. Uh, number 11 is uh, number – oh, sorry. Ah, Where's my periodic table? There it is. Number 11 is – uh, 22.99. I always forget the numbers. I'm not very good at memorizing those. I don't bother. I'm not a chemist. And also, I don't bother looking. I, I If I can look it up, like a number like that, I don't really memorize it. I, It's not something to me that's uh, valuable knowledge to just memorize. Sorry, my dogs keep coming to bug me, but it's okay. 22.990. Okay, so I want to do one with three shells now. Okay, so let's do three shells. Okay, so sodium, periodic table. Now, this is sodium. Old name is natrium, hence uh, Na, sodium. 
the NA is the symbol. This is why you will hear like uh, hypernatremia, hyponatremia. Okay. First shell, we have two. Remember, we have 11 electrons. Okay. So with 11 electrons, we've taken away two. We have nine electrons left. In these nine electrons, we have a second shell. Okay. In the second shell, we have nine electrons. So what we're going to do with these guys is we're going to put them in the second shell. And we're going to fill that up. And we're going to put uh, eight of them here. But what's happened is now... We have one electron left. And that one little electron is going to go in the third shell. And it's just going to go out there by itself. Let's just put him right here. He's going to go out by himself. So this third shell is not full. It can hold eight because it's not past argon. It can hold eight. It is only got one. So it needs seven more bonds. So it is reactive. Okay. All right, so I hope you draw these with me. Draw them with me. Go back, draw them. Take time to draw these electron configurations. It's going to help you learn it. It's going to help you get these into your head, okay? All right. So let's see where we are on our video. Uh, we have uh, that, the atoms, and the shells. Now, if a valent shell is unfulfilled, it wants more, so it's a, it's reactive. If a valent shell is full, it's not reactive because it can't hold any more, so it will not be reactive. It's called inert. Okay. Now, the last thing we want to do is set the stage for our next lecture, and that's chemical bonds. And that's all about the dip. chemical bonds will form molecules and compounds. And that's one of the last thing I want to do is really talk about chemicals and, and what a chemical and what a compound is. Um, now, I like to describe it like this, okay? is let's say you guys are going to the – so right down the road for me, just around the corner, there's a little ice cream shop called The Scoop. And at The Scoop, you can go get different scoops of ice cream. I can get different flavors. I can get two scoops of the same flavor on an ice cream cone or two scoops of different flavors. It costs the same amount of money to get two scoops of the same and two scoops of different flavors. Okay. Now, if I got two scoops of the same ice cream, I got two scoops. Okay. If I got two scoops of different flavors, I got two scoops, okay? So two scoops is two scoops. Now, let's say that I have a molecule. A molecule is two more atoms bonded together. A compound is when I take that molecule and those two or more atoms, are you contain different elements. Let me kind of help you understand this, okay, with chemical formulas. Now, let's say that I have H2, two hydrogen, N2, two nitrogen, and O2, two oxygen. And let's say I had H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, CO2, one carbon, two oxygen, and um, let's say we had uh, C6H12O6, six. six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens, okay? Let's say we have these chemical formulas. Every last one of these is two or more atoms bonded together. So these are all molecules. They're all molecules. Why are they all molecules? They are all at least two or more atoms bonded together. Two hydrogens, two nitrogens, two oxygens. Two hydrogens and an oxygen. A carbon and two oxygens. A six carbons, 12 hydrogens, 6 oxygens. They're all two or more atoms bonded together. But if we look at these guys right here, these guys are compounds. Why? They are both molecules and compounds because they are made up of different elements. Okay? So that is going to be kind of an important thing 
when it comes to dif differentiating those. Okay, so what we're going to do in our next lecture is we're going to help. Uh, we're going to make compounds and molecules by forming bonds and learning how chemical bonds happen. Okay, so this concludes the video. I'm going to go ahead and stop here because we are right here at a great stopping point, and this is where I like to stop and just set the stage for the next lecture. Guys, thank you, and I will see you in the next one.